Hi everyone, welcome to another Life on the Road with Yeshua Extra. I'm Ray Gaucher and I wanted to share with you a psalm that I was listening to while I was driving up here to Calgary. I'm not going to be doing a video on this particular trip so I figured I'll provide you an extra. I like to take it easy every second trip and don't record anything unless it's something really spectacular happens and then I catch it on my dash cam. But I like to use every second trip as a time spent just with the Lord. And I was listening to my audio Bible. And I decided to start listening to Psalms. And the very first one just stood right out to me. And if you're not familiar with it, it's Psalm 1. And I'll read it to you. It's quite short. And it just says everything. I mean, um, I've been talking to my sister Marilyn. God bless her. I love her very much. Um how important it is to um, walk with the Lord is, is the best you can. We hear, and I was talking to her about this, is that so many people walked with the Lord. It mentions it in Scripture. David walked with the Lord. Noah walked with the Lord. Job walked with the Lord. Um, Elijah walked with the Lord. And what does that meaning? What does that mean? Walked with the Lord. I would have to say from my own personal experience, from what I've read and what I've seen, it's having that real close, intimate relationship. You have a relationship when you first meet somebody, you fall in love, you guys are like this. You can't take it, you know, you can't rip each other apart. Neither person can eat, neither person can sleep. They're totally in love. I mean, they're just totally, that's what you call an intimate relationship. And to walk with the Lord, is a relationship that you just can't live without him. Every single day you must have him with you. Every minute of the day you must have him with you. And that's the relationship I've been seeking. And I've noticed that the Lord has... Uh, that's been changing in me. Every single day. I mean, I went home on my 36-hour reset. I had a good time. I relaxed. Put a video together. But I couldn't wait to get back on the road again because I knew... Even though the Lord was with me at home, there's distractions at home. You got to go shopping, you got to do this, you got to do that. But when I'm out here on the road, my attention is completely on Him. Uh, besides, of course, doing my deliveries or what have you. But um, I'm constantly praying that the Lord will give me a, a heart like David, a, a, a heart that um, that I become a man after God's a man after God's own heart. That's what I want to be. And I want to have, I, I want to hear the Lord tell his angels, Ray, down there, Ray, my servant, walks with God. He, he walks with the Lord. I'd love to hear that. And, and I know I've got a long way to go before that happens, but that's the kind of relationship that I want to have. That's the kind of relationship you ought to try to have. And that's a relationship that you walk with God, that every single minute of your day is included with him. And I couldn't find a better um, example that popped up in my head when I was talking to my sister yesterday. It's so very important. What a better um, example. What a better explanation. Um, how's your relationship with the Lord? Uh, well, I'm striving to walk with Him. Because every step that I make has to include Him in my life. I don't want to take a step without Him there with me. Holding on to me. Holding my hand. Guiding me. Um, yeah, boy, I'm sounding like I know what I'm talking about. Okay, I wanted to read this psalm to you. And this one just, like, whack! Just hit me perfectly right into the head. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. That sounds like someone walking with the Lord. Day and night. He meditates on his, uh, on his law. Day and night. There's no end to it. There's no break to it. Well, I'm going to go hit the bar for a half an hour. I'm sure the Lord will understand that. There's no break from it. <laughs> the way I look at it, even if you take a little bit of time away from the Lord, that is opening you up to possible attack by the enemy. Remember what Yeshua said to when he was up on... Uh, on uh, when he was in the garden. And what did he say to his disciples? He said, pray that, that you may not be led into temptation. Pray and keep alert. Keep awake. And that's pretty well the way I look at it. 
I wish I could quote the scripture more, but um, when I listen to it on the audio Bible, I know where all the stories are. I know where all the scripture, a lot of the scriptures are. I just can't quote the verses. <laughs> How about I say, it is written. There we go. Remember I told you that, Marilyn? That's funny. All right. That he meditates, meditates. Okay, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf does not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. See, there's a lot of advantages. Walking with God every single day. What you do will prosper. He will bless you. He will take care of you. He will watch over you. He will give you discernment. He will give you wisdom. You, it's, like, it's like having a bodyguard around with you all the time. That's the way I look at it. However, that doesn't say however, but the ungodly are not, are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of, of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Simple as that. There's a lot. Uh, just the key words. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of, scornful, of the scornful. But his, there's a key word, delight. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and he meditates on it day and night. Hallelujah. I sound hyper today, don't I? I wanted to show you my shofar. As you can see, this is a beautiful piece of work. Just look at how beautiful this is. And I don't know if you can actually get a really good look at this because of the... the angle on this thing isn't that great but here she is this is uh i believe this is um i might be wrong this is i think this is a ram's horn i do know it's kosher and it he's got some kind of a spice on it and it just it's just incredible it smells like a little bit of cinnamon 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 it's like chime or thyme or so he's got i don't know i can't remember what he put on here I want to show you what it sounds like. And I parked far enough away <laughs> from the other drivers at the yard. Now, I'm not very good at this. I'm still learning. But I want to use this to proclaim the Word of God. Now, what's really significant about the shofar, you'll remember in Genesis when the children of Israel heard the sound of a shofar many times on the top of Mount Sinai, and they were frightened. There wasn't anybody on top of the mountain blowing a shofar. It was the voice of God that was bellowing over uh, from the top of that mountain. We also see this in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, where um, John is called up to come and see, not the rapture, but called up to see, what is going to take place for the book of Revelation that he was going to write, that he was going to write down. But what was mentioned? He heard the loud sound of a shofar. Matthew 24, we hear the loud sound of a shofar. Thessalonians, we hear the sound of a shofar. The, the, the sound of the shofar is the mouth and the word of, and the voice of God. And it is to be taking, in, taken incredibly serious. And I cher I'm going to cherish this thing. And when I have an opportunity, I'm not just going to, you know, I mean, it would be totally sacrilegious to take something like this and blow bubbles with it, if you know what I'm talking about. This is something that should be cherished. And when it's blown, it's to be, it, it's to be used to glorify God and to praise God. I think I can get three tones out of this. Paul can get four. He's pretty good at it.
I can get a couple tones out of it right now, but it does take time. It really does. But I just wanted to thank Paul uh, for the beautiful job he did on this thing. It's just uh, a beautiful sight and it's just gorgeous and I can't wait to uh, maybe even make my way to Jasper National Park and when you've got a, a lake on one side and a lake on the other and mountains on both sides, I can just imagine what this will sound like and I'm looking forward to that opportunity. So I will catch up with you on my next video or, or uh, should I say on my next extra. Psalm 1. Have a read. Read it over a couple times. It's, it's pretty well says it all. Until next time, in the name of Yeshua, bless all of you and happy Passover.